for the word of God. Hallelujah. I'm excited about the message today. Um, I pray that you guys are excited about the message. You know, um, no matter what the message turns out to be, no matter what the theme is, no matter how it lands in the garden of your heart, understand that it is the word of God. It is the word of God. And the word of God ultimate purpose is to bring us to a place of understanding yes. where we can serve him more excellently. Yes. More excellently. Every word isn't always going to be uplifting. Mm. Sometimes the word will have to correct us. Somehow, sometimes the word will have to refine us. And sometimes the word will empower you. Sometimes the word will enlighten you. But every word is inspired and given by God. Every word. It's like having a balanced diet. Don't have to like Brussels sprouts and carrots and lettuce and, you know, things of that nature to recognize that my body needs them in order to be healthy. As much as I love steak and filet mignon and chicken and fish, if that's all I eat, I will be malnourished. Amen. We need the whole counsel of the gospel in order to be spiritually whole yes. and spiritually healthy. Amen? Amen. 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 Everyone have a Bible. Yeah. Want everybody to grab their Bible and hold your Bible in your hand and repeat after me. Say, this is God's word. This is God's word. It is my weapon. It is my weapon. When I wield it, when I wield it wisely, wisely, I will, I will always, always win. 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 Now Amen. take that Bible and open it up to the book of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. Hmm. Praise God. 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. And I'm going to read into your hearing verses 1 through 6. And I'm going to read from the Living Translation. By the meekness of Christ, I appeal to you, I, Paul, who am timid when face to face with you, but bold when away. I beg you that when I come, I may not have to be as bold as I expect to be towards some people who think that we live by the standards of this world. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power and demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And we will be ready to punish every act of disobedience once your obedience mm -hmm. is complete. Mm -hmm. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for blessing us. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you for protecting us from danger seen and unseen. We thank you for ordering our steps. We thank you for even when we, the times that we turned astray, the good shepherd that you are, you sought out your sheep that had wandered. You found us and yes. you brought us back into the fold, God. We're so grateful because sometimes we allow our folly to put us in perilous situations, but you are the good shepherd. You have not allowed those poor decisions to ultimately be our demise, God. Lord, we ask you right now, if there's anything unlike you in our lives, expose it, reveal it, and remove it, God. 
Forgive us for any offense. Forgive us for sins of omission, commission, or poor disposition, Father God. Purge us one more time, Heavenly Father. Wash us in the blood of your Son one more time. Clean the slate, Father God, that we may have clear connection with you so that we can hear accurately what thus saith the Lord this day, God. Lord, open our eyes that we may behold the wondrous things within your law. Open our ears so that we can hear what the Spirit of God is saying and open our hearts so that the seed of the word that is sown today falls on good ground and brings about fruit of righteousness that you may be glorified. Now let me decrease and you increase. Hide me behind the cross and speak through lips of clay. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. These things we pray in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Praise mm. God. Amen. Mm. Today we read a familiar passage of scripture in the book of 2 Corinthians. And that passage speaks about the weapons of our warfare. And I want to deal with this warfare and the weapons of our warfare to encourage the believer and the hearer today. Our objective this day is to remind the hearer that in this journey that we call life there will be times when we are called to arms there will be times where we will have to fight well it will necessitate a response due to the attack that we are dealing with in life we will be required to front to fight on the front lines and defend our faith there will be times where you will have to defend what you believe in that you will have to stand on the doctrine of God. Mm. I want the believer today that we can accomplish, I want you to be able to acknowledge and embrace the understanding that to achieve success in our spiritual conflicts, mm -hmm. we must combat the way God instructs us to, not how we're comfortable or accustomed to. We have to fight the way God instructs us to, not the way we're accustomed to. Mm. And finally, our third objective is to birth a new hope in the believer, informing them all that everyone has a weapon. Repeat after me and say it like you mean it. Everyone, everyone has, has a weapon. A a weapon. weapon. All right now. Everyone right. has a weapon. Amen. Hey, everyone has a weapon. Listen, 2 Corinthians is where we begin. 2 Corinthians. But we're going to look at the 5th chapter and 17th verse. We have our focal text. Um, and we're talking right now primarily to the believers. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. And this verse simply says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things passed are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. If you are in Christ, and if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, guess what? You're a new creature. You're a new creature. All things are passed away. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. If something's passed away, that means it's dead. It's gone. It no longer exists. We need to leave those passed away things passed away. Stop holding a seance trying to bring those things oh, back yeah. to life. Oh, yeah. Let those dead things stay dead. When we are children of the Most High God, we are now we, we, we're, when we start, we're born in the flesh. But being born again, we become born of the Spirit. Watch this. John 3, chapter 4 through 6. Y'all don't gotta run there. Just write it down and take your notes and, and look at it later. John 3, verse 4 through 6. Nicodemus saith unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit 
is spirit. You must understand when we are made new creations, we are no longer subject to the flesh. But now we have been born of the spirit. Now don't get too excited now about being born of the spirit because there's still a <laughs> challenge that we have to deal with. Right. There is this obvious hurdle that we have to reconcile. We got to handle this here bit of business. Right. See, the challenge is because even though we're dead and we're supposed to mortify the deeds of the flesh, and I'll get that for you in a second, the flesh is always present with us. Right. And that being as it is, we must consciously recognize that the flesh will always be in conflict with the Spirit of God and the principles of God. The flesh will always be in conflict with the principles of God and the Spirit of God. How many times do you try to study the Bible at home and you fall asleep? How many times do you be running around, busy body up, and you go to pray and you want to conk out? The flesh, the flesh is always at conflict with the spirit. Right. Romans 7, verse 14 through 21. Yep, homework, did mine. Now I'm going to give y'all some. <laughs> Romans 7, 14 through 21. For we know that the law is spiritual. Watch that. You know that the law is spiritual. But I am carnal, sold under sin. For that, y'all, matter of fact, go ahead. I'll wait for y'all to get there. Y'all need to see this for yourself. Man, I can't even get to the, whew, I can't even get to the everyone has a weapon because I got to get y'all to understand about the battle. Look at this. This is, if y'all, y'all grab a highlighter and mark this scripture up too because this is, this is one that you need to remember. I'll wait for y'all. Hallelujah. I'm waiting for you to. <laughs> Romans 7. Romans 7, verse 14 through 21. Romans 7, 14 through 21. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that, I, that do I. <laughs> Look at this. If then I do, watch verse 16. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but the sin that dwelleth in me. For I know, y'all see verse 18? Yes. Are y'all looking at verse 18? Yes. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. You ever been there? You ever been there? Verse 19. For the good that I would that, that I would I do not. But the evil which I would not that I do. <laughs> now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Messed you up, didn't it? Messed you up. All that Bible study you're doing, y'all ain't never seen that one, did you? <laughs> Messed you up, right? But the reality is, I know sometimes we struggle and we know the rules and we know the principles and we know everything. We got it all in the Bible study. We done highlighted. We done, we done remembered verses and everything. But then when the test comes, we do what the flesh wants. Yeah. Yeah. We forget about the rules. We forget about the tools. And we act just like fools. <laughs> oh, sorry. I had a little bit of fun. But um, listen, the only way to win the war against the flesh, there's only one way to win the war against the flesh. You have to crucify it. You got to kill the flesh. You have to totally and completely make sure that thing is dead and that it stays dead. Understand yes. that the flesh is always with us. The flesh is the vessel that the spirit exists in until God calls us home and gives us new bodies and everything. So we, you, you, 
said, when I say kill the flesh, you have to do everything in your power not to give the flesh any power. Right. Don't exercise the flesh muscles. When I'm talking about this, I'm talking about the mind of the world. I'm talking about the carnal presence that's with Don't feed that carnality. Don't right, entertain. Right. Don't, don't consume the things that will make that sinner man stronger. <clears throat> That's how you starve them to death. Right, right. Don't feed the, the negative thoughts, the negative places. We talked about this a little bit at Bible study. The, the shows you watch, the music you listen to, Linda chimed in, the books that you read, the things that you allow into your eye gate, into your ear gate, that begin to take up residence in your mind. Why is hatred living rent free in your mind? Why is vengeance living rent free in your mind? Why is the feeling, watch this, why is the feeling associated with those sinful activities living rent free in your mind, but you evict the repercussions quickly? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow. You got to crucify the flesh. Crucify it. Galatians 5, 24, 25. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. <laughs> we believe in the word of God here. Galatians 5, verse 24 and 25. Amen. It's a Bible teaching, Bible preaching. Amen. House of God. Verse 24. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lust. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. That verse 24 is it. That's the one. Mm -hmm. And they that are in Christ. Are you in Christ? Seriously. Yes, yes. Are you in Christ? When you, you accept Christ as your personal Savior, you tell him to forgive you for your sins. You come. You're a sinner. Lord, I accept the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. I believe that he was sent from God, that he died on the cross, that he rose and he come again. I'm the second man of my Lord and Savior. If you are in Christ, then that's a step. But now you have to crucify the flesh with the affections and the lust. So you got to kill you got to kill everything associated with the lust of the flesh. You got to kill that desire to throw a couple of back. You got to kill it. Right. Mm. It's easier said than done. You got to kill that desire to sleep with someone that isn't your spouse. You have to kill it. But man, I'm on fire. <laughs> I need it. You got to kill it. You have to kill it if you're in Christ. If you're in Christ. Because verse 25 says, if we live after the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. You have to respond to the flesh with the tools that God equips us with, like discipline and patience and obedience, faith and consistency. Those are just some of the tools that you have to respond to the flesh with to kill it time and time and time again because the flesh isn't going to go anywhere the flesh isn't going to let up the flesh is going to keep have you ever been hungry yeah have you ever been hungry just physically hungry yes, yes. what's yes. it gonna eat yes. what's your stomach do Growl. if you don't get something to eat does your stomach stop growling no insatiable no matter how long, if you're, 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 you know, I say, I'm so hungry, my stomach cussing me out in Chinese. Uh -huh. I, just, <laughs> I just, like, it just, it just keeps grumbling and grumbling. Ever been in a meeting and your stomach growl? Or you ever been in the company of other people and you like, oh, you're like, oh, dear. <laughs> That's the flesh. That's a good example. The flesh will not get off your back until Ooh. you satisfy Ooh. it. It will keep hounding you and keep do, 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 do you ever know why children are so successful with their parents in getting their parents to submit and do what they want them to do because they're relentless mm -hmm. they're relentless Amen. I want this no I want this no I want this no I want this no I want this if I give it to you will you just leave me alone <laughs> <That's the flesh. laughs> exactly exactly right you know him well I'll just give it to you. Maybe I'll it. But that's how the flesh is. That how that's how, especially when the enemy knows mm. you used to like that. You used to enjoy that. 
one of my favorite snacks of all times is Twizzlers. Yes. <laughs> Twizzlers. Used to, I, I used to stay with Twizzlers in the house. Yes. Used to stay with Twizzlers in the house. Teeth messing up, falling apart, didn't care. Chew on the other side of my mouth. Oh, didn't right. care. Brush my teeth, get it out of that hole later on. Love Twizzlers. Can't tell you the last time I've had Twizzlers. I cannot tell you. Yeah. Every time I walk past them at the store now, I'll just be like, we had a good run, but. Now yeah, we're done. <laughs> yes. You have to crucify those things until they become, watch this, a non fact Eventually, they become a non-factor. Right. When you distance yourself from it long enough, because you know what you discover? You discover that you can live without it. Yes. You discover that you can you 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 can survive without. It. Praise the Lord! I've got at least three years clean of Twizzlers. I'm not making light of anybody else's affliction, but let me tell you something about Twizzlers. I'm gonna talk about me. Twizzlers, Twizzlers could have been the death of me. Y'all yeah. think it's funny? Because no. diabetes runs in my family. Mm -hmm. And when I talk about eating Twizzlers, I could get the big bag. Nom 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 nom. Football game. Nom nom. That's my. Oh man, I only got two Twizzlers. I'm gonna eat this whole sugar. Uh huh. Seriously. Yeah. I'll eat Triscuits. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> Let me get back in here. Let me get back on the focus here. Listen, listen. This is a war. Yeah. You gotta understand that like sickness and disease is a weapon that Satan will use against you. Yeah. And if you're not conscious to what your weaknesses are, what you're genetically predisposed to, what you have chemically opened yourself up to, what you are emotionally at risk because of relationships, or the, the enemy can use that naive approach or that ignorance to land a death blow. And because we are at warfare, we have to understand that each and every one of us has a weapon to overcome these weaknesses. Yes. We each have a weapon to overcome the weaknesses, but we cannot forget what verses 4 and 5 said in our focal text. For the weapon of our warfare are not carnal. Are not carnal. But, and, and, and you got to understand this. You shouldn't want to use a carnal weapon. You shouldn't want to use a carnal. I know punching somebody in the mouth might be momentarily pleasing. Amen. It might be momentarily Amen. pleasing. I, I, I know, I listen, listen, I know chemicals may be momentarily pleasing as far as dealing with stress or, or sadness or anger or helping to um, nullify a, a feeling of hurt that we're dealing I know, that, but they're just temporary. But if you understand that the weapons of your warfare are not carnal, the comma and then the word after it makes you motivate you to use God's weapon because it says, but mighty. Yes. Ain't nothing mighty about a Band-Aid. Mm, right. What I mean, a Band-Aid is just a temporary fix. A Band-Aid just, a Band-Aid just covers up the whole. This here says, the weapons of God are mighty through God to the pulling down of strong holes. Like, like, imagine this wall was sheetrock, right? And there was a hole in the wall. Mm -hmm. Pull that uh -uh, watch this. All, all a carnal weapon does is cover it up. Right. Hole still there. Oh. Hole still there. Mm. Band-aid covered up, but you move the band-aid, you still got a scar, could be infected, could be everything. Right. But what the weapons of God is like, that's like, that's like, that's like plaster mm. that fills in the hole. Yes. That makes that wall that was once weak stronger oh, yeah. it fortifies it it supports yeah. it gives it substance yeah. this is why you have to use the weapons of our warfare because they're the things that are strong enough to pull down strongholds verse 5 goes on and says casting down imaginations mm. and every 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 and every every I, i'm adding words y'all forgive me and cast down every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of god right and bringing into captivity bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of christ awesome. your weapons your weapons everyone awesome. has a weapon god has equipped us all with weapons and with purpose and that's what 
our weapons do this. Do. Watch this. The purpose of the weapons, as I just said, to cast down the imaginations. The purpose of the weapons of our warfare, to cast down the imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Everything that is not like God, everything that seeks to build itself up in your mind to make you think that something is right, but it's contrary to the will of God, to the principle of God, your weapon is to cast that down. The truth is to um, revoke that mindset. The truth is to um, invalidate it and make it, a, that's what your weapons are for. You have to, other, when you're thinking a certain way, your weapon is to either verify or, or, or reject. Verify. I like how you said that. It's to verify or nullify. I like how you said that. It's to verify or nullify that information. Our weapons tear down and deny false teachings and beliefs that are contrary to God's will. Our weapons nullify that homosexuality is okay. Our weapons no man, don't get me started. Our, 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 our weapons nullify that it's okay to test drive a, a, a person of the opposite sex before you marry them. Our, 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 our weapons nullify right. the stuff that the world says is okay. They nullify. The truth of the matter is, you have to be you have you have to be honest. Do you want to nullify some of these Come mindsets? On. Do you want to nullify, or do you enjoy feeding the flesh? Mm. Mm. My wife and I we were talking this morning about how many. Oh uh, yeah, I'm about to lose some friends. Uh, <laughs> oops, oh, I'm out there now. Uh, my wife and I we were talking about earlier how many of our friends that are saved went to the Bad Boy reunion concert over the weekend. We like they just walking down memory alley, just had to get one more test. Yeah, just had to go visit Sodom and Gomorrah one last time. But the reality is, we have to. It's okay to listen to rap music. Have you heard some of the content and lyrics? Have you heard what, remember we talked about it? What's really getting into your ear gate and your eye gate? What's okay with watching a rap video these days? It's okay to watch them twerk. <coughs> twerk. It's okay to watch those women shaking their money makers or, or with hardly any clothes on. Is that okay? Is that, is that, is that something acceptable that we should, we, we should, does it, it do, do, do our weapons, do our weapons verify or nullify that? It nullifies that. I'm so glad I don't got no daughter, but if she walked out the house, man, look. I was like, I was, I was on the way to, we was on the way here today, I didn't say anything to my wife. I saw an older woman in a, with, with a walker, and she had on some tights. I was like, it's, we just passed the era where anybody will wear any loose clean clothes anymore. They just, everything is just going to be, I'm like, she in a walker. Like, but she's still trying to, got, the, got all these tights. I know, I know, I know they're comfortable and everything. I get it, I get it. You can cover that up. You can, if they come, just put a blouse around that. Right. You don't gotta be, but everybody just don't care. But our weapons, they should be tearing down those false teachings. And not only that, but then they should be bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So every thought that tends to lead us away from obedience and causes us and drives us into disobedience, right. we need to bring that into captivity. 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 Think about captivity. I know y'all, yeah, like, you gotta bring those negative thoughts out. I'm gonna say it just like we, because we talk different under the L. Here we go. So, so those thoughts that would lead you to the disobedience, you have to bring them into captivity and throw them in the prison cell. Mm. Put them in solitary confinement. Lock them up. Right. Lock them up so that they can't get out and mess you with your growth grow. and development. You have to, you have lethal injection, firing squad, put them, a, take them to the gallows, I don't care. But you need to bring them under captivity. Mm -hmm. Stop allowing those ungodly, unchristlike ideals and imaginations right. run free. Yeah. Run free. You have to bring them under captivity. And guess what helps you do that? Your weapons. Yes. Your weapons have a purpose, but you must believe in the purpose. Your weapons have a purpose, but you must believe in the purpose. And when you do, then you will believe in the weapons. Amen. And when you believe in the weapons, then you'll start to use them. But until you believe that these weapons that I'm about to tell you about, I haven't even told you about the weapons yet. But when, I, when you believe about, when you believe that the that you have weapons and the weapons have a purpose, then you will believe in the weapons and you will start to use them. Understand that whatever battle you are fighting, it's bigger 
Watch this. Whatever battle that you're fighting, it's bigger than the person that you're in conflict with. It's bigger than the disease or the sickness that you're trying to overcome. It's bigger than the financial struggle that you're having right now. It's bigger than the addiction that you may be wrestling with. It's bigger than the oppression. Whatever battle, it's bigger than the source of the struggle. The true battle is for victory and testimony and glory that God gets when we triumph over the flesh. Yes. <sighs> It's not about you getting your credit right so that you can buy a nice car. It's about the fact that God has grown you and matured you so that he can use you so that the world can see that you could have been in poverty, but because of God, now you're in prosperity. When God delivers people from terminally Ill, terminal illnesses like cancer, it's not so that they can live longer, but it's to give hope to other yes, people that yes. with God all things are possible. Amen. That this incurable disease, there is a cure. But that cure is in the kingdom. You got to believe in the purpose of the weapons. Let me help you out with these weapons. Let's talk about some examples in the Bible of people that had weapons. We're going to start with my boy Moses. Moses had a weapon. Moses had a weapon. In the book of Exodus, the fourth chapter, Moses is talking to God up in the mountains. And, and God is telling Moses about going down to Pharaoh and telling Pharaoh to let his people go. Right. Moses had a weapon and, and, and God told Moses what is it that you have in your hand and he took the hand and it was his rod and he said put the rod around the rod turn into a snake and then he picked it back up out of the tail and it turned back into the staff and we know Moses in this rod Moses 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 put the rod in the Red Sea and the Red Sea split Moses held the rod up and then the buds of the almonds grew in the rod there was a lot of things going on with this rod that Moses had it was in his hand and and, and that's what God said take what's in your hand. But let me explain something to you about Moses and his weapon. Because Moses' weapon was not the staff. Uh-huh, I threw your curveball. The yeah, Moses' yeah. weapon wasn't his staff, but Moses' weapon was his faith in God that he would make good on his promise and cause Pharaoh to set his people free. That he would fulfill the promise he made to Abraham. Yes. See, 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 God made Abraham a promise that Moses was just a part of the solution so that God could fulfill a promise that he made long before Moses was ever on the scene. It wasn't the rod. Right, right. The power wasn't the rod. The weapon wasn't the rod. The weapon was the faith. Do you have any faith? Because everyone has a weapon. Everyone has a weapon. Let me give you another example. There was a man in the Bible and by the name of Samson. And, and, and the story of Samson can be, can be found in the book of Judges, the, the 13th chapter. And, and the part that you want to dial in on is um, Judges 13 verses 2 through 5. I'm going to read it really quick because it tells you where you can find, hallelujah, Samson's weapon. Yeah. And verse 2 reads, and there was a certain man of Zorah of the family of the Danites, hello, hi, one of the 12 tribes, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren, and bare not. Listen to this, how many times have you heard this? And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the yeah. woman, and said unto her, behold now, thou art barren, and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive, and bear a son. Now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine, nor strong drink and eat not any unclean thing for lo thou shalt conceive and bear a son and no razor shall come on his head yes. for the child shall be a Nazarite unto God and the womb and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines and we know all the stories about Samson how he killed so many people with the jawbone of a donkey and he carried the gates of the of the city on his back and, and, and he just did so many miraculous things because of his strength and you know how the story goes, everyone said that his power was in his hair. But I want you to understand that his weapon was not his strength. His weapon was not his strength. See, 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 because his weapon wasn't his strength, it wasn't that jawbone, it wasn't, it wasn't his bare hands. His weapon was his purpose in God. God had already told him he would destroy, he told his mama before he was born, your son is going to destroy the Philistines. His weapon was his purpose. His 
purpose that God had for him before he existed. Everybody has a purpose. Everybody has a weapon. Did you catch that? Are y'all catching? Yes. Everyone can have faith. Everybody has a weapon. Everyone has a purpose. Everybody has a weapon. Let's talk about David real quick. Can we talk about David? Y'all know the story about David. Right, 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 right. Y'all know the story about David. David, you know he slew Goliath with his rock and his sling. David was able to chase off demons when he played his harp for, 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 for Saul. And, and, and David was a great man of war. But watch this. In the book of 1 Samuel, verse 16, verse 11 through 13, it reads, And Samuel said unto Jesse, Jesse was David's father, and Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here, are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. Mm. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was Rudy, and with all of the beneficial continents, and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David. And from that day forth, so, and that, from that day forward, so Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. I want you to understand that we didn't know the story about David and how he slayed people and how he killed Goliath and how he played the harp. But his weapon was not the sling. His weapon was not the stone. His weapon was not his harp play and the instrument that he used. But his weapon was was his anointing. Oh my yeah. goodness. See, before he ever saw the lion, he was anointed. Before he ever dealt with Saul, he was anointed. He already had his weapon long before he got yeah. to the battle. I want you to understand that when the anointing of God is on your life, the purpose of God is on your life, you have faith of God working in your life. You have your weapon. Oh, come on. Helping him preach, yes. <laughs> I know that was enough. I got one more. Can I give you one yes, more? Because yes. I had to study about one of my favorite prophets. I'm talking about Elijah, right? Right, yes. right. Elijah had a weapon. Now watch this, watch this. Studying Elijah was crazy. Because Elijah just popped up on the scene in the Bible. I looked back and forward. I looked to my Greeks and my Hebrews. I went and got my Bible dictionaries out. I went on the internet and I was searching. I was like, where did Elijah come from? He just popped up on the scene one day just talking. <laughs> just prophesying because Ahab, a king or a ruler, was cutting up. So then Elijah was just sent there to be on the scene. Now listen, 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 listen. We understand some of the things that Elijah did. Elijah was the one that when there was a drought that Elijah prophesied right. was coming. God sent him first to be fed by ravens. Yeah. God was like, I got to look after my boy Elijah. I'm going to send ravens to bring you food and a brook that he drank from. And then when the brook drew, um, um, drew up, um, God was like, I have to look out for my boy Elijah. I'm going to send you to this woman. When you find this woman, she's going to provide you food throughout the rest of the famine. Elijah went to the woman and the woman was, and he was like, bake me a cake. And the woman was like, I am about to bake me and my son partly a cake. Then we are going to die. But instead, because God loved Elijah so much, he allowed a woman who was about to starve to death provide him and her family with food. Because God, and then we know about when, when Elijah finally came to the, the, the contest of whose God is real, how he, how he allowed a fire to come from the sky, and then Elijah killed all the prophets that were false prophets. And, and I want you to understand that all of that is great, and all of that is wonderful, but Elijah's power wasn't the fire from the the sky. Right. His, his, his weapon wasn't the God cannon. Mm. His weapon was his relationship with God. Yes. Mm. His weapon was his relationship with God. Elijah needing food because he prophesied the drought. That was God's responsibility to take care of his servant. Had a relationship with God. And the great thing about it is the story about the woman and the son who are about to starve to death. They benefited who? Yeah. They benefit her. Listen to this. They benefited from Elijah's relationship with God. It wasn't their relationship with God that allowed them to make it through the, the famine. It was Elijah's relationship. Let me tell you something. You have a weapon and your weapon is so powerful that not only will it save you, but it can save those who are connected with you. Yeah. When you believe that you have a weapon and use the weapon that you have. Hallelujah. Right. Everyone has a weapon. Jesus, yes. 
Everyone has a weapon. Your faith in God, that's your weapon. Your purpose in God, yes. that's your weapon. Your anointing of God, that's your weapon. Your relationship with God, that's your weapon. Listen, singing is great. Yes. Worshiping is great. Watch this. Watch this. Service is great. What I do up here, preaching is great. Mm -hmm. it's, it, 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 it's awesome. Guess what all of that stuff is? Those are bullets. Yeah. Those are bullets. But bullets don't do anything. They don't do any good until you put them inside of a weapon. You have to put them inside of a weapon. So I can praise God all I want, but if I have no faith, no purpose, no anointing, no relationship, I just got bullets. I can serve all I want. I can clean the church. I can mop. I can do it. I can give all the money I want. I can preach my little heart out. But if I ain't got no lifestyle. Right. If I don't understand why I'm here, if I don't allow God to order my steps, if I don't work my relationship, all I got is bullets. Mm. Worthless bullets. Mm. Like. Exactly. You. Your natural gifts, it is your faith and use of them in God's kingdom that gives them impact, yes. that makes them powerful that causes them to pull down those strongholds. Look, instead of waiting for God to give you what you think you need, why don't you look at what you already have and you're not using? Are you really using your faith in God? Are you still living paycheck to paycheck? Are you still waiting for your ship to come in? Are you waiting for that big gig to come through? Or are you exercising and moving out in faith? What are you using that you already have? Do you even or have you even discovered your purpose? Are you around people who can help you define and find your purpose? Because everyone has a purpose. God didn't just make you to be making people. Right. <laughs> God didn't just make any of us to just be making stuff. That's right. Like he ain't got nothing better to do than just be throwing people out there. No, there's a purpose. <laughs> there's a purpose. Do you think God would waste his time having all of this wisdom and seed sown into you Sunday after Sunday, Bible <coughs> study, just for nothing? Would you would you would you plant a garden if you didn't in, if you didn't intend to benefit from the vegetables or the flowers or the herbs that that garden would produce? Would you waste your time like that? You gotta discover your purpose. Do you believe that you're anointed by God? Mm. Do you believe that you're anointed? Do you believe that you're empowered by God? Do you believe that God continues to cover you? That, see, 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 we talked about David. We used the example of David. David was anointed by God. And even though David fell into some hard times, matter of fact, the king that he was supposed to um, succeed was after him and sought to kill him. But David, because David was anointed, God protected him in that season. God would right. not let him die. Do you understand that things that should have killed you didn't kill you because of the anointing on your life? Because of the purpose in your life because of the call in your life mm. do you believe that you're anointed are you using that weapon mm. are you developing this is the tough one are you developing your relationship with God you got to what do you already possess you have a relationship with God what are you doing to develop it if you use the gun if you ever fired a gun before do you just Get a gun and believe that you're going to be nice with it. What do you do to get good with your weapon? You practice. You go to the range. I know we're a little different under the L, so I gotta be careful. But you're supposed to <laughs> supposed to go to the range, some target practice, become familiar with your weapon. Train with your weapon. Use your weapon so when you need your weapon because you're going to need your weapon because we're going to go to war we're, You will have a battle. You will have a struggle But if you practice with your weapon, listen, listen when I went to basic training for the military They didn't just send me to the military. They sent me to basic training right. They taught me in a controlled peaceful environment so that if I was to be put in combat I wouldn't be like how do I load this thing? Where do the bullets go? What do you, how do I make right, this right. thing fire? No, 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 you know what are these pointy brass things with the, the oh a bullet how about you so but the reality is you're training your practice do not neglect your training and your practice work on your anointing hone your craft yes. um, um, become 
comfortable in, in, in your purpose and, 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 and build your relationship because there's going to come a time where you don't got drill sergeant. Yes. Mm. Where, you know, where, where, where you don't got drill sergeant. Where, where, where you don't have all of, all, all of your platoon with you. Where you're going to have to fall back and rely on your, your training to get you through. But if you've been like so many of us, come to church and find you a comfortable seat. Um, God bless you. Hallelujah. Then the man of God get up there. You done. <laughs> Doing training. Yeah, sleep through class. And when you get out there on the battlefield, you ain't got no weapons. You done went out to battle empty handed. This ain't even bringing a knife to a gunfight. Yeah, this is this is coming to the empty-handed, empty-handed, empty-handed. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are ineffective if you don't use them. <sighs> ineffective if you don't use them. Right. Somebody break in your house. You got a closet full of guns uh -huh. bullets. <laughs> and bullets. You've been going to the range and you just let them come in anyway, do what they want. Then you mad. Right. Are you that person? I should have went and got my gun. I could. Are you that person after the fact you talking about I would have, could have, should have? I'll be like, bye for me, should Ain't nobody trying to, no try to hear that. But, but don't be that person when it comes to your spiritual battle. Because when you have those setbacks in the spiritual warfare, it's deadly. It really costs you a lot. Don't be that person to be like, I wish I would have prayed. I wish I would have stood my ground. I wish I, because what you, you, what you lost, you lost a little bit of time, but you also lost that testimony. You got you you lost that testimony of, of of praise and honor and glory to God that somebody else needs to hear, that someone else needs to see. So that you don't know if that battle that you just forfeited was the testimony that somebody needed to shift the direction of their life to cause them to want to know what you got that enabled you to be victorious, and you could tell them it was Jesus. And they would be like, oh well, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me be curious. Let me see about this Jesus. You have to give God the chance to show himself mighty for yes. you. Give God the chance to show himself mighty for you. Step back and say, God, anointing, faith, purpose, relationship, have that in it. Have that in it. I'm getting out of the way. I'm shutting my mouth. I'm taking my hands off it. Have your way, God. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say nothing. I'm not going to put anything in my body. I'm not going to put my hands on anybody. I'm going to be patient. I am going to wait on you. I am going to, I'm going to trust you. These are these are your weapons. Yeah. And then just 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 give God the chance to show himself mighty. And then when he turned up for you, you'll be like, you'll be so happy that you did. Yeah. You'll be so happy that you did because not only does God get the glory and you can give him the praise, but you don't have to deal with the um, consequences of the disobedience, right. of the sin that you would have went through before. You have a weapon. Use your weapon. Have faith in the fight. Be confident in your covenant. Remember, your relationship releases resources to the righteous. It's your purpose that positions you to prosper and prevail. And always acknowledge your anointing over your life at all times. You have a weapon. You have to remember who you are. You are a new creature. You are born again. You are a person of the spirit. You are a kingdom ambassador. Yes. You have to say, when, when, when you feel like you're good for nothing, when you feel like you're a loser, when you feel like you can't do nothing right, when you feel like if all you had was bad luck, you wouldn't have any luck at all, you got to remember, that may be who you were born as, but now you are born of the spirit. Now you are more than a conqueror. Yes. Now you are, you are more, you are his anointed. You are his light. You are salt in amongst the earth. You have to remember, you are the head and not the tail. You yes. are the lender only and not the borrower. You have to remember who God says you are now that you're in covenant with him in faith and purpose and use your weapons as that person, not the person that God is, that the 
the enemy wants you to believe you are. Yes. Release your faith in your newness. Mm. Mm. I release my faith in my newness. Yes. I'm not a womanizer. Mm. Man, I'm a husband of one wife. <laughs> I'm not an alcoholic. I'm a man who is sober-minded through Christ. You got to release your faith in who God says you are, not the label that the world keeps trying to put on you. Yes. I'm not a hoodlum. I'm a man of integrity. I'm a man of wisdom. I'm a man of principle even before you get all the wisdom. That's who you are in God. Even though you get all the principles, be that man in faith. Be that woman in faith. Be that person in faith. I'm almost done. Praise God. <laughs> Everyone has a weapon. Yes, everybody has a weapon. Amen. Amen. Everyone has a weapon. And Satan knows that you're armed and you're dangerous. Yes. <laughs> he knows that you have been licensed to crucify the flesh, to execute lies, to extinguish darkness, to kill death, and liberate life. Your weapons kill death yes. and liberate or set free life. Mm. Your weapons. Mm. Mm -hmm. The wages of sin is your weapons kill that. Mm. You understand? Your weapons kill everything that desires to kill you. Wow. Oh man, if I could get somebody to really understand that. Yeah. Your faith kills sickness. Your relationship kills oppression. Your anointing, your anointing kills addiction, kills false teaching, kills abandonment, kills, kills molestation. It kills all those things. It kills them. It kills them. Because when the world left you for dead, yes. God picked you up. Hallelujah. God covered you. God knows your purpose. God knows your destiny and your weapons kills everything that the enemy desired to destroy and it liberates hope. Yes. It gives life to purpose. It gives life to your strength. It gives life to your design. It gives life to who you are. Yes, yes. God. Jesus. Mm. You're more than just a painter. <coughs> You're more than just a teacher. Yes. Whew. You're more than just a laundry man. Yes. You're more than you're more you're more than just a janitor. You're more than just housekeeping. You're more than just a nurse. You're you're, you're so much more. You're more than just a grandfather. You're more than just a grandmother. You're more than just a father. You're more than just a mother. You are God's anointed. Ooh. And those other roles that you play in the flesh, they are just conduits by which God can release and show his anointing to the world. So as you parent, God shows what excellence looks like as a parent. As you serve, God shows what excellence looks like when you cook and when you evangelize to the community, when you give clothing and food. Thank you, Jesus. When you clean off the urine-stained steps of the church. Thank you. God's getting the glory 
in spite of in spite of what the enemy is trying to stain mm. everyone has a weapon yes. I want you guys to believe Mommy. that you are the dangerous to the kingdom of darkness mm. believe that it is your assignment and your purpose yes. to pull down strongholds believe that you are a sleeper a secret agent you are a time bomb yes. planted yes. in the stronghold and when you embrace that you are a bomb that's about to go nuclear in the midst of the darkness oh what impact you will have within Satan's fortified walls but Satan doesn't have enough strength he doesn't have enough power he doesn't have enough brick and mortar to protect him when the people of God go nuclear and explode all in the midst of his camp everyone has a weapon everyone has a weapon and in the hands of God we all become mighty weapons for his glory use your faith Embrace your purpose, lean on your anointing, and become a sin killer with your relationship in Christ. I pray that you are blessed. Thank you, Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Father God. We thank you for this day, God. Hallelujah. Lord, let us no longer ever. Lord, let us kill the thought that we're helpless. Let us never feel helpless in any situation ever again. Let us never accept that lie. We always have a weapon as your children. We always have a means to fight any situation, any battle, any struggle that we face, Father God. Let us all understand that we don't have to be afraid of the snares and the traps and the devices and the attacks that come against us because we too have weapons. Yes. People come at us with words, we come back with the word of God. Yes. <laughs> we have weapons. Lord, let us rely on our weapons to pull down the strongholds in our life that you get the glory out of our living. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.